Hi everyone, this is Jacob here, and today I thought I'd go through all of the components you need when building a race quad. What they do, what to look for, and how to connect it all up. So without further ado, let's get started with the motors. When building quads, there's two types of motors. The first one is brushed. A brushed motor is great for a quad that's really tiny and needs lightweight motors. It works by having a brush in the bottom half of the motor, which switches the polarity, and because of this it's powered by direct current and can therefore be connected directly to a battery. The other type of motor is a brushless motor. It's great when you need a lot of power, however it's hard to make it that lightweight. This is the type of motor used on race quads as well as bigger quads. It works by using three AC wires which are all separated by a third of a wavelength. They are then connected to different coils that attract and repel the outside magnets. When looking at motors you use the term KV. That means RPM per volts. The higher the KV, the faster it will spin. Therefore it's very important to look at your prop size when choosing KV. Here are some guidelines listed. The most common prop size for race quads is probably 5 inches. It gives a lot of power and can easily carry a GoPro, while still being very agile and small. Now that we have the motors out of the way, it's time to move on to the electronic speed controller. The electronic speed controller converts DC power from the battery to AC power. It also regulates the speed from orders it has been given by the flight controller. On the top part we have the AC power output. Here we have the three leads going to the motor. Because they're all AC power it doesn't matter which order, we just change the direction of the motor. On the bottom part we have two pads that need to be connected to the battery. The speed controller will then take power from the battery and redistribute it to the motor. Beyond that we also have three other plugs, being a signal wire, a 5 volts and a ground. Not all speed controllers have a built-in BEC, that being a voltage regulator for the 5 volts, and therefore you might just have two wires, being the signal wire and the ground. The signal pin is a pulse width modulation input, and we will later on connect that to the flight controller. When choosing the right speed controller, there's mainly two aspects to look for. The first one being the maximum voltage. If you're planning on building a 250 class race quad, I recommend you to at least get a 4S capable ESC. It's also very important to look at current draw. You have to look at your motor and see what it requires. Most high performance motors these days have a current draw of about 25 to 30 amps. Now it's time to move on to the power distribution board. So the power distribution board is just a circuit that distributes power from the battery. They can sometimes also include a voltage regulator for powering accessories like the flight controller. To the right you can see an XT60 plug where the battery connects and gives power to the board. The power is then redistributed inside the board to the pads for easier connections to the ESCs. The PDB pads then align correctly with the ESCs as you can see. Next up is the flight controller. So the flight controller is essentially the brain of the craft. It gathers data from sensors like the accelerometer and the gyroscope and also the receiver and then calculates how to distribute the power among the motors. It usually has a receiver port for PPM or PVM where you can connect your receiver. Beyond that you usually have one or several UART ports where you can connect all sorts of peripherals like LED strips or the newer product called S-Bus. The cluster of pins you see here is where you connect the ESCs. It has three rows. One is zero volts and one is five volts. Both of these are connected, which means you only need to connect one five volt and one zero volts. However, most people connect the five volt from all of their ESCs for redundancy. The last row is used for PBM output to the ESCs. Depending on what program you use, they will need to be connected in different orders. However, this can always be changed later in the software. As you can see, there is more than 4 motor outputs, and that's for controlling a hexacopter or octacopter. Now you know a bit more about flight controllers, and it's time to move on to the next part. Of course, all of this needs power, so let's move on to the battery. LiPo batteries are the most commonly used batteries for RC flight. They provide a lot of power and are easily recharged. The capacity of the battery is expressed in milliamp hours. Most 250 size quads run batteries around 1300 milliamps to 1800. One LiPo cell has a maximum voltage of 4.2 volts, 
Therefore, they're stacked in series inside of the battery to make up for a higher voltage. A 4 cell battery is very common on a 250 size quad, although you can use both 3 cell or more if you want even more extreme thrust. Lastly we have the C rating, which defines how much current the battery can output at the same time. To get the max current in amps, just take the capacity times the C rating, in this case it's 126 amps. When talking about batteries, it's also very important to note that the energy is dependent both on the voltage and the capacity. Therefore, if you upgrade to a battery with more cells, you don't need as big of a capacity. Now that the battery is in place, it's time to add some propellers. There's a lot of different types of propellers, and they all have different flight characteristics. The text on the prop defines first how long it is, in this case 5 inches, and the other number the angle, in this case 40 degrees. Propellers can be bought with different amounts of blades. It's very popular these days to run 3 blades, or even 6 blades. Usually more blades means more thrust, but at the same time they get more inefficient, so it's a lot of a balancing game. My recommendation is to buy a few different props because they're so cheap, and then find your favorite. With the props attached, we can move on to the receiver. The receiver receives information from the transmitter with instructions that it then sends to the flight controller. It's very common to run the receiver on 2.4 GHz, since it's the same channel as Wi-Fi, which means it can be used freely. On the top of this receiver you can see the pin headers. That's where you connect the PPM, PVM or SBUS signal to your flight controller. Although we will probably go through these protocols in more depth in another video. From here just connect the receiver plug that came with your flight controller and you are good to go. At this point the quad is actually fully functional and ready to fly. But there's one more thing we're gonna add, and that is the FPV system that transmits the video from the camera to your goggles or screen. First of all, they both need power. Some camera and transmitters can be powered directly from the battery, although some need a voltage regulator. Just check with the documentation that came with the product. To connect the video signal is very simple, you just connect the yellow video wire and then a ground, and it's now transmitting video. It's important to have your FPV on another frequency than your controller. It's therefore very common to run it on 5.8, which also is another Wi-Fi frequency and therefore free to use. There is a lot to know about frequencies and bands inside of frequencies, but we will go through this in more depth in another video. So at this point we've got a fully functional FPV quadcopter. I really hope this video helps since I know I had a lot of trouble myself when I was starting out trying to find all of this information. Thank you so much for watching my video, I hope you liked it, it was definitely a lot of fun making. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe, it does help a lot. And if you want to see all of this in practice, please look at our how to build a race quad video. That's all for now and I'll leave you with the time lapse of me making this video. Thanks for watching.